Welcome to my channel, Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang. And I'm Wolfgang, and my gift to you today is this guided meditation uh, in a little, you know, of my five cents about substances, you know, that we are addicted to and maybe abuse, you know, and paying a price. Maybe we can do it without it. Maybe we weren't even aware of it, you know, but it's clear as much of this as possible. <laughs> You know, whether it's sugar or caffeine, you know, or opiate addiction, you know. And, uh, you know, we all have maybe our little burdens. Mm -hmm. And sugar, you may ask? Well, you know, I have a 45 millimeter gunshot wound hole in my left thigh in the back, you know, from a boil. And I have kind of a hole that a 9 millimeter would make, you know, on my left cheek also form a boil, you know. Um, the Hindus may know, you know, the famous Opinayan, you know, scandalous uh, music film composer from Mumbai. You know, well, yeah, he fed me about one and a half pounds of, you know, Mumbai's number two uh, burfi. You know, that's like a milk sweet, you know, covered with silver foil. And, you know, it was just fantastic. And, I mean, he giggled and laughed and fed the whole thing. He said, ah, oh, I don't mind. You know, oh, my God. Um, you know, I got boils from that. Yeah, I could, uh, yeah, barely walk. You know, I crawled to the bathroom. And, you know, of course, he knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, that is sugar. You know, I mean, if you probably eat a pound of sugar, you know, every day for a week, yeah, you're probably going to die, you know, pretty painful death. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my father always used to say, you know, um, you know, every substance can be toxic, you know, or medicine, it just depends on the quantity, you know, the way it's being used. And, you know, I mean, I think he's, you know, completely right with this. So the following, you know, will be kind of a list, you know, of toxic or addictive substances. You know, it's not a complete list, you know, of all the recreational or psychedelic substances out there. You know, there are far too many, you know, of them for the purpose of this video. And also I have no authority, you know, to speak about them, you know, due to lacking direct experience. No, once, you know, you learn how to use your own life force properly, <laughs> you know, you can achieve a natural high. <clears throat> so, you know, I want to make sure, you know, that um, the legal and illegal drugs, you know, are very dangerous. You know, and then also, again, you know, in many cases, illegal. And, um, you know, and that the use of illegal substances is, of course, in no way supported by this channel and Wolfgang. And the intent of this video is to clear any dependency, you know, on addictive substances. You know, of course, there's going to be, you know, some, let us say, around the campfire talk, you know, about personal experiences. Um, you know, so this not, this should not be seen as like a cool, badass behavior, you know, to be assimilated, but more as a warning about pitfalls you know, of a veteran you know, of maybe many psychic wars. Okay? So the kicker is, you know, addictive substances all come with a deal attached to it, you know, like cigarettes, you know, nicotine. It grounds you, it gives you a short, you know, but harsh high, you know, but you pay, you know, ultimately with lung cancer. <laughs> and, um, you know, but um, originally, you know, it was used, you know, in a sacred way. So, um, you know, my wife once grew, uh, you know, an uh, original tobacco plant she got from the Native American Seed Church in Tucson, Arizona, you know, and she just grew one in front of the house, you know, tossed it. And it grew into a beautiful plant, you know, I mean, three meters high, and she harvests it with respect. And, you know, somebody had given me a chanupa, that's a Native American-style peace pipe, that had been touched to a chanupa that had been touched to 
your original chalupa. So I took this and, you know, the sacred tobacco that has been grown to Sedona and did a medicine wheel ceremony with this tobacco. And oh my God, <laughs> you know, my horse field, you know, was all over the place. I would say um, four or five meters, you know, anything from 12 to 15 feet, you know, in every direction. And of course, also up and below. And of course, that it, you know, after that, I started smoking. And of course, never had that experience again. You know, I started abusing, you know, our, um, tobacco, you know, um, because you know of this one great experience. So, you know, in a sacred environment, you know, yeah, it can really help. And if you, you know, abuse it, not being special anymore, uh, it can be quite um, damaging. You know? And so, another thing, you know, about um, addictive substances, you know, uh, there can be also a lot of karma attached to this, you know, like you or your ancestors, you know, may have been involved, you know, in pushing opium onto the Chinese to the colonial opium wars, you know, and you, know, you might be striking now with an opiate addiction, you know, pill popping. So, in this guided meditation, you know, we will find out, you know, if you are affected by these substance addicting addictions, you know, from this or past lifetimes, you know, and then, of course, you know, we ask that these contracts or addictions, you know, be cleared. And, <clears throat> of course, you know, the obvious danger of, you know, of psychedelic drugs is that it kicks the door open, you know, to past lifetimes or to, you know, life on the next dimension, astral dimension. Mm -hmm. And, you know, images may start flooding into your, you know, um, into your awareness, um, you know, and that kind of may freak you out. You know, where you uh, maybe a little, it's a little premature for you. You know, to do so, you don't know how to ground, you don't know, you know, protection, you know, you have no clue, you know, how the good beings can protect you, you know, and you don't have shelter and love, you know, you don't know how to operate your chakras. So, you know, and maybe you don't have philosophical training, <laughs> you know, so um, it could be, you know, um, kind of premature, you know, that is a danger, you know, your mind gets blown. You know, so that's in general, it's better to do the austerities, you know, beforehand, you know, like Kundalini, yoga, you know, or start rebirthing, you know, breath for a couple of hours, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so good breath work, you know, can really replace uh, drugs, you know, um, what's the study, Stanislav, Dr. Stanislav Graf, mm -hmm. Czechoslovakian psychologist, you know, he first used um, LSD with his um, clients, you know, 95% successful in heavy um, criminals. And then uh, when that was illegal, he, you know, used breath work, you know, and got uh, pretty much the same results. Mm -hmm. So with breath work, you know, you pay up front <laughs> and not with the credit card, you know, where you maybe get an advancement, then uh, pay a lot more later on, you know, in damage and interest. Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, but even without drugs, you know, when I saw some of my incarnations, you know, where I was super badass, you know, I cringed. And it took me a few months, you know, to come to grips with it, you know. And I'm like highly trained in Western and Eastern philosophy and mystical practices. Again, you know, when you, you know, rip off the doors of perception too fast, you know, it might be a little harsh for you. So, you know, so it, um, you know, whenever you take something quite, you know, strong in a psychedelic sense, you know, you gotta be ready to, you know, have some gut shocking discoveries, you know, about you and maybe the dark side, you know. So this is uh, no longer armchair philosophy, you know, where you're pushing around theory, you know, but more like a bare knuckle experience. <laughs> 
And when you start taking these power substances, you know, yeah, I mean, you may not, you may be shown stuff you did not want to see, you know, but you probably would have to see them, you know. Yeah, so, for instance, you know, um, regarding those drugs, and just tell me, tell you another campfire story. <laughs> so, and I was in Kathmandu, you know, around 40 years ago, you know, and so many teenagers, you know, nice looking, clean, you know, beautiful teenagers, I mean, I read faces, you know, with lotus eyes, you know, um, they, you know, there were two lines, you know, they approached you with, you know, either, hello, mister, you want to, my sister, and the other one was, um, you know, you want some heroin, cocaine, <laughs> you want some heroin, cocaine, you know, so, of course, that stuff is very cheap there, you know, and um, so, you know, I was quite amazed, you know, um, that we didn't, you know, how does the local population, you know, do when these substances, you know, are freely available. And so then at a, you know, one of those cool restaurants, you know, I talked, you know, to a journalist that has been living there for 20 years from Vienna. And so he told me, you know, um, the reason, you know, um, why they, you know, can handle these heavy drugs is just like in Europe. You know? In Europe, um, let's say in Germany, you know, you can walk around with a bottle of whiskey, no problem, no cup will hassle you, you know, you can, you know, um, drink in the park, you know, you can drink, you know, unless you start vandalizing and, you know, annoying people, you know, it's cool. <laughs> Right, and um, so, but of course, you know, if you start drinking in the morning, you know, there's a social stigma attached to this. You know, I mean, people look down on you, you know, there is a social pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, you know, if you start drinking, let's say, you know, after sunset, like the British, you know, occupation, you know, um, did in, in India, you know, the gentlemen, you know, they were all boozing, but, you know, if you started boozing, you know, um, before sunset, you know, you went really down the tubes fast, you know, in this tropical climate, you know, it's harsh on the body, just, you know, staying sober, you know, but then, you know, drinking and drinking before sunset, you know, you really go get wasted fast, <laughs> you know, go down the tubes very fast. So, you know, you know, so, but, you know, getting blasted, after sunset, you know, was considered, okay, you know, you basically, you're a functioning alcoholic, you know. So, in similar ways, <clears throat> you know, if in, in Nepal, you know, if you would, you know, smoke something, you know, after sunset or for sunset, you know, that was acceptable. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he said, you know, in pretty much in every population, you know, you have about, you know, 10% of people that are heavily disturbed and dysfunctional, you know, and these are those that become, you know, victims of these kind of addictions. You know, and, uh, oh. <laughs> you know, so that's how they handle this. Of course, also, you know, in hindsight, you know, for a local to afford, like, you know, heroin or cocaine, you know, this would have been very expensive for them. You know, but, I mean, they had access to mushrooms and ganja. You know, they were, you know I've seen, um, they had like ganja trees in front of their house, you know, a little further out of Kathmandu, you know, to fatten up their cow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so anyhow, you know, so whatever I'm saying here, you know, please only accept that what resonates with you. And during the guided meditation, you know, absolutely no driving or operating heavy machinery. You know, um, so this guided meditation, you know, on my voice will speed, uh, you know, space you out. So, um, of course, this is uh, just a, you know, shotgun rail shooter meditation. You know, where we do not spend um, much time you know, lingering on a certain situation, you know, that maybe or most probably needs further investigation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, um, so at least you know there is something going on, and then later on follow up, you know, with deeper meditation with the pendulum. 
you know, and of course, if you resonate with my style, if you have, you know, strong experiences, you know, I can do them deep clearing in a personal session on Skype or Zoom with you. You know, my prices are still very reasonable. So when you're sitting down with your feet on the ground, like office chair style, you know, you're going to have nice back support, you know, for an hour and you have a good connection with your earth, you know, and your spinal axis. You know, it's in you know 40 it's in 90 degree angles you know with, with the earth you know which is optimal for connecting with the cosmic forces mm -hmm. and, and when you are laying down um, you probably can achieve deeper relaxation but most likely you will fall asleep and pass out you know which is great for many of you that have problems <laughs> falling asleep and if you want, you can actually right click it with your mouth, you know, the screen and then, you know, have it put on loop and it can play all night long. You know, that should generally, you know, clear a lot of stuff and maybe even more potent, more potent, you know, than just doing a sitting, you know, meditation. And, you know, close your eyes, you know, and we ask that everything that happens in and from this guided meditation here, turns out to be for your highest good and is also in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we also ask that it has for you, you know, a maximum impact, you know, putting you on the highest timelines. Mm -hmm. And now we ask, yes, the spirit's guides and your high self, you create a bubble of love and light, you know, that is iridescent, that will protect you from, you know, any dark chi, from any dark thought forms, and from any dark entities attacking you. And smile. And we ask that this bubble be filled with rainbow, love, um, yeah, if you have a good relationship with unicorns, we ask them to do so now. Um, and smile. Ooh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we also ask that your personal domain, you know, depending what you have. This could be you know, a cell in a penitentiary or your bunk bed in the army or your apartment, or your trailer, or your house, or your mansion, or your car, or your tent, or whatever bubble of private space is available to you. You like to have this you know, cover too, with another bubble. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. Then she asks that bubble be made so that it redirects any dark energies, entities, and thought forms to heavenly vacuum cleaner portals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to have those also installed in, in your living space. You know, heavenly vacuum cleaner portals, black holes, white holes, mm -hmm. that um, suck out the dark energy from this dimension. Mm -hmm. Only the dark energy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we ask that this dark energy be transmuted, you know, forever the highest good, you yeah? And that it helps you, you know, to be elevated again in your own divine blueprint, you know, for the highest and most divine expression of your soul in this incarnation. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. And now we ask the spirit guides, you know, to clear, you know, any blocks and resistances in our grounding to connect with Mother Earth. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. And please bring in the optimal routing systems. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'm going to activate ley line codes or hook us up into the proper ley lines. You know, they're still pure enough for us. Mm -hmm. That will, you know, be good for us. Um, uh, um. And to liberate, you know, from us, you know, false thought forms that have been inserted into our mind, you know, just to sabotage us. Um, And, you know, again, you know, fill our, you know, bubbles with rainbow fire and a beautiful waterfall of heavenly waters. You know, they flow over you and through you. Um, you know, it takes always about five seconds for it to kick in. And I know three plants, you know, that are supreme for love. You know, one is the rose, the other one is the lotus, and then there's also Tutsi, Devi, or called Holy Basil. In the West, we invite them also in to our inner sanctuary. Um, um, um. Oh, yeah, a smile. <laughs> That's beautiful to have their company. <laughs> And we also asked the thistle plant, you know, which is very protective, you know, to grow around us, you know, and to protect us from any negativity, you know, just they send it into the earth to be transmuted there. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. And now put the tongue to the top cupola, you know, of your palate in your mouth cavity and smile and we ask to be connected you know to the star nations and to milky way galaxy you know we ask that any impediments dark coding you know dark technology spells vows curses and just uh, damage you know trauma and the dark magic like reverse crown, crown of thorns, crucifixion implants, you know, voodoo doll, pokey pokey, you know, or wings or plates or skulls, you know, stuff like that. Let's be all be cleared. Also, any dark iconic attachments. Mm -hmm. You know, they love to attach at the Garber de Marie and at your temples. Then mm -hmm. now we invite, you know, the, our tribes of love and light, our star tribes of love and light that are, you know, approved by our high self into our presence, you know, the dome of love over us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we ask them, you know, to help us, heal us, you know, clear any sabotage and then also Activate our Stargate codes. Um, um, if they need any help, you know, to transmute any heavy energies, you know, we kindly ask Lord Shiva, you know, which is the transmuting principle of Absolute Source, to please help out. Um, So now you're really nicely connected with the heavens. Let's just get you connected to the social memory complex that you also have in the subterranean realms. Mm -hmm. If you have any, and if it's for the highest good, you know, we allow this now. Um, just smile and see what happens to your force field. And this should be kicking in now. Mm -hmm. It'd be very uplifting. Mm -hmm. And if you have any doubts, we just ask them, you know, to convince you with their love, the strength of their love. Uh, um. Ooh, yeah. mm -hmm. 
So the subterraneans, they're really expert, you know, in emotional balancing. So let's give them permission, you know, to help you in your emotional balancing. You know, in Sanskrit, you know, stay in Sattva Goon. <laughs> you know, in the mood of goodness. Amen. Alright. And if there are also any, you know, entities attached out of our you know, head and other templates, we ask that they be brought to the courts of divine justice and to please reinstate our own divine templates, hmm? especially cleared jinn programs. And make the changes permanent so they cannot be reattached to them, and then bring all the liberated energy back to our soul after purifying them. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. And let's just rush through some little bit more stuff, you know, and give a whole shopping list to our spirit guides here. Yeah. Please clear any white noise implants. You know, any anti-life codes, reversal codes, you know, and spin all the spinning stuff in our energy systems in the life-affirming direction. Unless there is, you know, a spinning, you know, that needs to be for clearing, you know, so you know how to spin it properly. We give you permission and request, you know, to have our stuff spun properly. Um, um, um. Then you, 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 you know, this should be feeling quite good now. So, and now let's do the yes and no coding. Mm -hmm. So we ask your spirit guides and your high self, you know, to give you the code for yes. So in most cases, you know, I like to have an upflow of energy from the heart to the head that would feel like this. You know, another one would be like, you know, a feeling of love popping into your heart, you know, or enthusiasm, which would maybe feel like this. Mm -hmm. We asked your high self to give you a yes, no, amen. <laughs> yeah, my high self is funny, did both of them together, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. And the no would be like a feeling of you know, energy flowing from your heart to the feet, feeling like this. Or like a feeling like a downer, feeling like that. Yeah. And you know, we asked to be shown a no for you now. Uh, All right, so let's start, you know, with sugar. <laughs> so sugar, of course, in its natural form, you know, is honey or ripe fruit, you know, and you can't get enough of that. You know, it has a large spectrum of vitamins and minerals, you know, instant energy, it's super easy to digest, you know. So sugar is super yin energy, you know, in the duality of yin and yang, you know, that the Asians supply. And so it expands your consciousness, you know, or your focus and spaces you out. You know, it's the opposite of being focused. You know, just watch little kids on you know, sugar high and rush, you know, they're bouncing off the walls. You know, of course, there is then later on the huge hangover. You know, when you crash after the sugar high, right? And of course, let us not talk about diabetes. And, you know, of course, sugar is a substitute for love. You know, who does not want to make love to a quart of ice cream after being dumped, right? So, uh, do you have any good karma with sugar? Yes or no? Ha, 
How about bad karma with sugar? Yes or no? Mm. Do you have any contracts with sugar? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Now what's the most important contract you have with sugar? So, you know, another favorite month, in, um, well, that is kind of dying out nowadays, it's, well, maybe it survives in vaping, it's nicotine. No, it used to be the cash crop near North Carolina and Virginia, like marijuana, you know, is nowadays, or used to be nowadays, and, you know, it uh, you know, was one of the reasons, you know, people came to America, you know, and the natives used it for ceremonial purposes. You know, like giving back to nature with cornmeal as a thank you. Mm -hmm. And also they would smoke it, you know, with the chanupan, you know, a ceremonial peace pipe, you know, in their four or seven direction medicine wheel ceremonies. Um, and also, you know, mix it with other herbs. You know, much of the herbs they got mixed to was um, like relaxants, like skull caps and others. And I already told you about the ceremony I did in Sedona. So, you know, tobacco, you know, smoking a cigarette, you know, grounds you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it gives you a short and a harsh buzz, you know, a kind of a harsh high for, you know, short time. And then you get lung cancer. <laughs> Mm, and, and of course it was really pushed, you know, in the world wars, you know, and at least the Americans got hooked on it, you know, freely delivered. Of course, it's a stress reliever, mm -hmm, and, um, you know, so all the soldiers, you know, used it, you know, hurry up and wait, you know, so you smoke a cigarette. And of course, in all the Hollywood movies, you know, of those times, you know, and cigarette smoking and booze, you know, that was the um, substance abuse of the hero. You know, look at Humphrey Burger, you know, the cool guy of his time, you know, constantly smoking and drinking. So, uh, <laughs> and do you have, you know, any um, good common with tobacco? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And if you get a yes, then probably the use of ceremonial use is a medicine man, most likely. Ask if that is correct. Mm -hmm. and, and do you have any negative karma, you know, with tobacco, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Let's uh, ask maybe your ancestors had negative karma with tobacco, maybe, you know, have grown it as a cash crop, yes or no. Mm -hmm. Are you having any deals, you know, with the tobacco spirit, with that consciousness, yes or no? Are those deals in any way good for you still? Yes or no? Well, if they're not good for you, we like to have them cancelled, no? Pretty please. Um, um, um. And all those aspects of you, you know, that got stuck due to lung cancer, let's have them liberated. If this is possible now. Um, um, um. So, um, now we're coming to, you know, one of the most favorite intoxicants, you know, it's very legal, you know, pretty much everywhere except the Muslim countries. Alcohol, you know, used for thousands of years, you know, even animals use it on purpose, you know, like fruit flies <laughs> that are sexually frustrated, you know, they tend to, you know, go to the rotten food more often. 
you know, male elephants, you know, also on purpose, you know, seek out, you know, rotten food, you know, to get intoxicated and a little rambunctious, you know, you have all herds of frustrated young males. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, yeah, if you, and, you know, want to, you know, learn a little bit about, you know, the social lubricants of alcohol, you know, read Jack London's, you know, John Barleycorn. You know, it's even on book on tape, freely available on YouTube. It's awesome. You know, I mean, when I read that, you know, it definitely changed my view onto alcohol. Well, you know, what are the, you know, um, advantages of alcohol? Well, it lowers your inhibition. You know, so if you are like a woman hunting or, you know, you want to hook up, you know, as a lady even, you know, um, being too uptight, that fully doesn't help, you know, and having, you know, one or two shots, you know, I mean, lowers your inhibition and you can be more your normal self. Mm -hmm. And then it also starts dimming, you know, your frontal cortex. <laughs> yeah, it means, you know, you're not thinking that straight anymore, you know, your awareness, you know, gets more diminished. Mm -hmm. I consider this like, you know, after like half a bottle of rum, for instance, you know, you and see life, you know, in a very simplified perspective. You know, just the basic, you know, st stumps of a tree, not all the twigs and branches, you know. Very simplified, you know, point of view, which, of course, you know, can have, you know, some, you know, um, really elevating effect on you, you know, the different perspective, you may learn from that. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing it in a simplified form, you know, it becomes more obvious, mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, and of course the other one, it impairs motor functions, you know, so sex on booze, you know, is definitely kind of a waste. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then when you get really drunk, you know, and you black out, you know, yeah, and there is another entity in your body, you know, doing a joyride. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you don't remember anything anymore. And I've heard, like, you know, legendary stories, you know, of bar fights, you know, where somebody kind of blacked out and then just, you know, had this, you know, they would say, you know, more or less superhuman strength, you know, beaten up, you know, like, you know, tons of guys in a bar, you know, and then not remembering anything of this, you know, so this can happen. And, um, of course, you know, if somebody is, you know, if you're all drunk out of your mind, you know, so those spirits, you know, or ghosts, you know, human ghosts, you know, they don't mind trashing out your body. Mm -hmm. So, of course, on the good side, you know, alcohol, you know, has a social function. So, I've been shooting a lot of weddings, you know, and also corporate events, you know, in Vegas and so on, you know. Um, yeah, so, you know, and I noticed that, you know, after two beers, you know, people on the table, you know, becoming friendly, you know, and communicative, you know, before this, when they're all sober, I didn't even start photographing, you know, they were all uptight, you know, staring everywhere, you know, and, uh, you know, but after two drinks, you know, conversation was fun, they were giggling and laughing. You know, and, um, you know, then if they started drinking more, you know, it starts getting more crude. You know, then you're really on the downside. Mm -hmm. So it, it has a, you know, in, in, you know, it has a good function in lowering inhibition, you know, and showing, you know, your true self. You know, you are dumber, but then more honest. <laughs> and maybe your more true self, you know. And, of course, maybe deep inside you are adorable and it works really well. And, of course, you know, there was, you know, probably some karma, you know, we had prohibition, you know, or we drank ourselves to death, you know, and, or we beat, you know, we got drunk, got into fights, and, you know, and killed all the women and, you know, beat the kids. Do all kinds of stupid stuff, having accidents, mm -hmm. or we just produced and pushed alcohol. You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to abuse it. Maybe we were gangsters. <laughs> yeah. I had guys, mafia hitmen, you know, as, you know, that they had to liberate <laughs> for my clients. 
So, you know, these things, they all happen, you know, in past lifetimes, if not in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, question, do you have good karma with alcohol, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you always have been a happy drunk, you know, that would be a good sign. Mm -hmm. Now, do you also have bad karma with alcohol, yes or no? Mm -hmm. I think that might have outweighed the good. <laughs> Do you have any contracts with alcohol? Yes or no? And what is the particular nature of your special contracts? Pretty please. And if it's for the highest good, you know, we like to have all the unnecessary contacts that are not for your highest good anymore, you know, cancelled. Um, um, um. So, you know, now the next really important, you know, super drug, you know, without um, the modern corporate world would collapse is caffeine you know, mostly consumed, you know, in the form of coffee um, in America, then the soda is Mountain Dew, and in, in Britain, you know, they drink tea. <laughs> it's called tea, and then it's not as harsh and hard mm -hmm, as caffeine, mm -hmm. and it's basically, you know, enthusiasm in a drink. You know, if you were depressed or dragging your butt to work, you know, and you get a jolt of caffeine, you know, suddenly you got a spring, you know, in your step. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, recently I had an experience with caffeine. So, I think this was about two years, uh, you know, four, two years ago. So, I popped about um, 450 milligrams of caffeine. And I had two sessions, you know, in that day, and you know, there were sessions that wipe out a normal person. I had two of them, you know. Then I went to the gym, you know, and worked out. Mm, a nice heavy workout, you know. And then I recorded, you know, and finished scripts for two videos. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to take a nice hot bath, you know, to relax. Of course, you know, a hot bath is like a cardio for your heart and for your body, you know. And then, um, you know, my heart started racing. <laughs> and I had to lay on my bed, you know, and really, you know, doing breath work out the gazoo. You know, you may say that I had a panic attack, you know, but my heart was like racing, you know, for about half an hour till I had that down. And, you know, I know a lot of tricks, you know, how to counteract them. And that was kind of <laughs> the last time, you know, I took coffee in. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> so, um, you know, so do you have like a good common with coffee in? Yes or no? Do you have bad karma with caffeine? Yes or no? Do you have any contracts with uh, caffeine or tea that are not for your highest good anymore that your high self rather cancel? Yes or no? And if there is such thing, then please cancel it for the highest good. Um, um, um. So, now uh, let's talk about speed. <laughs> you know, so yeah, speed is like a, just, just like a slang word, you know, for anything that speeds you up. You know, whether it's like a black beauty from the truck stop, you know, or whether it's ephedrine, you know, derived from the ephedra plant, you know, it could be used as a tea, but, you know, it was used for asthma. 
and well you know once i pop the whole roll of those they were really available <coughs> in germany over the counter well i mean you know i had a great time dancing you know, all night long um but you have to have really good control of your mind you know otherwise you know this energy you know gets very argumentative you know and you know it's like cocaine you know pretty abrasive mm -hmm. so you gotta be careful now um in the army you know i met uh, one of those bicycle riders you know racing so this was a guy that looked like nothing but he had like huge thighs and you know an enlarged heart <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. And so, you know, we talked about speed, you know, how, you know, whether he ever tried it. And he said, yeah, he did, you know, for a race. And he took some speed and, you know, he could really, you know, access his energy. And then there was a point where all his energy was gone, you know, and he fell off the bike and just lay there. You know, he had not a drop of energy left. You know, the way he explained it, you know, your body maybe let's say keeps ten percent of the life force for emergency purposes. Yeah. And you see, I like you know having a credit card, you know, with uh, you know some extra, you know, in case something happens, you know. And if you you know spend this extra emergency, you know, energy, and then if you need it, it's not there anymore, and you can die. Yeah. So, you know, that's, you know, the worst you know, thing around speed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, on the other side, you know, you have not, I mean, he confessed, you know, um, doing, you know, his initial Playboy magazines in two, three days, you know, didn't sleep, you know, speed. I knew a guy that did some similar. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Um, I also, you know, talked um, to a guy that I knew very well. I mean, his intelligence, you know, he was off the chart. He probably cruising at 160, you know, went to elite high school. And so he used to shoot up, you know, shoot, you know, I mean, into the bloodstream, you know, speed in New York City. And he said, you know, he would stay up, you know, to five days before crashing and then he gloated to me imagine you know you can do anything you want for five days without actually being interrupted by having to eat and sleep mm -hmm. and of course um, before you get too excited um, <laughs> When you burn your candle on both ends, you know, there is a price to pay, you know. So his liver was shut and he had a huge anger issues, you know, and the died about two decades earlier than the usual. So do you have good karma, you know, with speed, yes or no? Do you have bad common with speed? Yes or no? Any contracts? Yes or no? And what type of contracts? Now, you know, a more extreme form of speed, you know, are uh, amphetamines. You know, um, this was the little helper of the Nazis, you know, helped them with their Blitzkrieg and bombing raids, you know, so their pilots would stay sharp. Mm -hmm. And, you know, guess what? <laughs> Hitler, you know, he did his speeches, you know, on methamphetamines. Mm -hmm. You know, gave him that little extra edge and energy. You know, and I've seen some footage of him, you know, where he's tweaking, you know, sitting there in the Olympic arena, you know, tweaking a meth like that. You know, it's 
pretty cool to see. And my stepfather, who was a sunny, you know, who was a, a medical officer during the in the Second World War, he knew, you know, that his doctor was prescribing them, you know, methamphetamines. Alright, so, um, you know, um, have you been, um, you know, do you have any good karma, you know, with meth? Yes or no? Do you have any bad karma with meth? Yes or no? Do you have any contracts with Smith? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And so, if they're not for your highest good anymore, they like to have those cleansed by your high self, and if necessary, by Archangel Michael. Um, um, um. So, another of those stimulants, you know, in the whole, like, highland culture, you know, in South America, kind of, the Inca, you know, uh, those guys, you know, in the high altitude, you know, um, their culture was possible due to the coca leaf, you know, very similar to caffeine with the corporate world. <laughs> and, I mean, you can, it's sustainable, you know, so, you know, it, um, you know, you can live a long life, you know, um, chewing the stuff. And, of course, you know, um, you have to concentrate it, you know, and we have cocaine. No. And uh, it was given to the slaves <laughs> in the cotton fields mm -hmm. and in the factories and whatever workshops. And um, but they stopped doing this. You know, there were too many riots. <laughs> you know, the slaves got a little unruly. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so. And, and you know, cocaine, you know, has a definite reputation. You know, um, you know, it's being used in the music industry a lot. You know, and film writers and authors, you know, use it a lot. I mean, I, you know, got across a couple of them as clients. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, why do you think, you know, so many of the rock stars, you know, in the 70s, 80s and 90s are so skinny? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you so pudgy, they're so skinny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and you know what it does, basically, well, you know, it cranks your root chakra like crazy. It can crank your second chakra like crazy. You know, it gives you like a harsh sexual high. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, you know, also, you know, other, you know, um, you know, higher concentration though, you know, they did test and people didn't really perform like better cognitive functions, you know, but it probably gives you some energy. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have any good, good karma with cocaine? Yes or no? Do you have any bad karma with cocaine? Yes or no? Uh -huh. How about your ancestors? Any um, bad karma with cocaine? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. If you have any contracts with cocaine, with that spirit, mm -hmm. um, do you have any? Yes or no? Oh, yeah. And if necessary, we like to have those cleared now. Um, uh, um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, something else, you know, around cocaine. So, you know, I had clients, you know, that were involved in this um, kind of thing. And, um, you know, what became very, very clear that whenever there's coke involved, you know, there's also, you know, quite some harsh violence involved. And guess what, you know, the dracos are involved. So they start, you know, courting people when they're high, they start overlaying to them, you know, doing all kinds of mischief. So if you do coke, you know, watch for the dracos, you know, do a decoding, whatever, you know, I mean, don't ruin your life. Mm -hmm. 
here. So let's, uh -huh, yeah, just asked, you know, have you been corded, you know, from the Draco, you know, due to coke use in this or past lifetimes, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And you like to have that cleared and any, you know, contracts regarding coke, you know, cleared now. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about hashish. Mm -hmm. So hashish was traditionally smoked in India, you know, as a sacrament, you know, before puja, or certain groups of Shivites, you know, I mean also Naga Babas, you know, sometimes even in public. And I seen it myself, you know, and the local cops, you know, knew better than to mess with them. You know, they may shake down some tourist kids, you know, when they're having pot. Um, but not the sadhus, <laughs> no, they stay away from this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you smoke hashish, you know, especially, you know, if you have a good intent with it, you know, a prayer before, you know, it kind of elevates you, you know, in two levels to where you normally are. You know? It also puts you in harmony with Mother Earth, you know, and your body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, typical hippie, right? It makes you more peaceful and it can stop the inner dialogue, you know, and helps you to experience, you know, your senses to a, a deeper degree. You know, so it was, you know, in America, you know, brought in a lot of popular with the jazz musicians in New Orleans, you know, of course, you know, the Mexicans used it too. You know, and so besides, you know, um, just, you know, enhancing your acoustic acuity, you know, also your visual acuity becomes stronger. And also, you know, your taste buds, you know, ergo the munchies. Now, um, you know, for the artist, you know, uh, a little warning. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe you're an artist and your sense of perception is enhanced and you think, you know, you're creating this great masterpiece. And then when you're not high anymore, it just looks like a normal, very average, you know, piece of work. You know, so you got to be really careful, you know, um, not to think, you know, that you kind of um, reinvented the wheel or invented sliced bread, you know, when you're kind of high. <laughs> you know, very careful. Uh -huh. Now, traditionally, you know, in Europe, especially in Germany or even in America, you know, hashish was available, you know, in pharmacies, you know, so little Bobby, you know, was a little skinny and he did not have any appetite, you know, and that definitely would fix it. <laughs> and there's also, of course, Aldous Huxley, you know, he ingested it with his philosopher friends. And, you know, then they philosophized about it, you know, spoke about it, you know, in which, um, you know, led to the book, you know, The Doors of Perception, you know, which changed the, you know, the whole generation. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, do you have good karma with, um, you know, hashish, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Do we have bad karma with hashish? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Are there any kinds of contracts that you have with hashish and that don't have to be there anymore for your highest good? Yes or no? And let's have those cleared then. Um, um, um. Yeah, and you might say, well, Wolfgang, you know, um, what about my Johanna? Yeah, so, in, um, you know, generally it has become <laughs> in the West so strong, you know, like Ashes used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, basically, you know, traditionally, you know, my Johanna, you know, was blended up, you know, and then eaten, and, you know, digested in a drink, you know, with so yogurt and honey, 
you know, or, you know, this candy, like raisins, you know, and almonds. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, a lot more trippy you know, than um, smoking. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, we have edibles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that way, it can really be abused, you know, so I definitely recommend being very, very careful. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so I had an experience, you know, this was the first time I was a fine art student, you know, and I got a little piece of Turkish hash and uh, asked the girlfriend, hey, how do you consume this? You know? And she said, well, you can put it in a tea, <laughs> then drink it. You know? So we drank a tea, you know, nothing happened. And then, so after like about an hour, you know, I just looked in the tea kettle and there was, you know, all this crumbly stuff on the ground. Well, I ingested that, you know. And then after about an hour, um, suddenly, you know, um, she, my, my vision turned into fish eye vision, you know, which is actually, you know, your really perception is, you know, um, it's like a fish eye, you know, your eye is kind of like a fish eye, you know, not aware of it, and, and gets interpreted and put stitched together into, you know, the, <laughs> into the picture of the world that seems to be out there and seamless, you know, but I saw the real thing. And then also there was time dilation. So when I, um, you know, focused, the fish eye aspect, you know, went away, and also the time went back to normal. And when I relaxed, you know, time went slower, really slow. Yeah. And then I decided to get into my little moped and drive home. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going back between time dilation. <laughs> and um you know in then real time until i decided this was way too dangerous and i you know pushed my little moped home yeah so you know these things can be very very dangerous mm -hmm. i mean i kept my cool you know and all that but um, you know um, you gotta be really careful now um you know edibles you know they get you out there you know another you know, warning story, you know, from around the campfire. <laughs> yeah, so when I was, you know, in Nepal, in Kathmandu, you know, somebody told me, oh my God, you got to try their hash cake. You know, it was actually the Mahjohana cake. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you had to order that, you know, the day before. And it was in this beautiful restaurant under a roof. You know, I think the place still exists. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so I ate, you know, the whole cake. I mean, there was probably, you know, anything from half an ounce to an ounce, you know, of my Johanna in this cake. It tasted great, you know, and then I waited and waited and waited, and then I got really high, really high. Mm -hmm. And then when I closed my eyes, <laughs> You know, there were these uh, masks, you know, um, there was this demoniac mask with this huge mouth, you know, bulging eyes mm -hmm, and big teeth and big lips. You know, they were dancing around me, you know, trying to attack me. Mm -hmm. I opened my eyes again, you know, they were gone, but I was really stoned, you know, so I wanted to just close my eyes and, <laughs> and fade away. But then there, there were, you know, and just you know, harassing me. But that was pretty scary. And then I looked down and I realized that I actually was peeing myself. You know, I didn't feel the pee, you know, I just saw you know, my pants getting all wet. <laughs> you know, yeah, this was the first time in my life that I peed myself out of fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but you know, well, you know, I asked her, you know, Rixa, uh, pat pat, you know, to drive me home. And I kind of slept it off. So, yeah, you know, so these were actually um, entities, you know, like ghosts that are used to scare little kids into submission. So that's what I later found out. <laughs> so, yeah, they had some fun with me scaring me. So, again, you know, uh, you gotta be careful. So
So, do you have any good karma with marijuana and edibles? Yes or no? Do you have any bad karma with edibles? Yes or no? Are there any contracts that your high self would like you to clear regarding the marijuana and edibles? Yes or no? Okay, then please do so for the highest good. Mm -hmm. Also clear a new dark karma around these things. Um, um, um. <coughs> So, let's talk about mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the ones that, you know, grow in cow poop. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. So, you know, very similar in Nepal, you know, I was at Pokhara, you know, this beautiful lake, you know, the king has his villa right there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a really sweet scene there, you know, about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, somebody recommended, you know, to get the mushroom cake, which I did. And, you know, there was about, uh, I don't know, a lot of mushrooms, you know, a lot of mushrooms. And, you know, it was, you know, one of the most beautiful experiences, you know, I had, I have to say. So, um... For instance, you know, that lake is about, you know, a mile, you know, maybe one and a half, two kilometers, and, you know, you swim across, you know, I, I, I swim across this by myself, <laughs> no, no problem, you know, I mean, I was so in harmony, you know, with my body, you know, I just, it was just, I merged with the water, it was beautiful. Now, I'm a photographer, you know, so, and I see things, you know, quite objectively. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, there were three views that were just worth, you know, a postcard, each of them. You know, one view was the view of the jungle, and there was a blue sky behind this with the stars. You know, that it was sunset. Beautiful. You know, the deep colors, the deep green, the, the dark blue, the white stars in there. And then, um, a little to the right, <laughs> you know, there was, um, what's this, this white, super white mountain, Mount Kalash, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, beautiful. There's the snow, and, you know, the uh, blue mountain behind, you know, and then the mountains on the side framing it, you know, a beautiful postcard picture. And then on the other side, you know, where I started, you know, there was this kind of Chinese pagoda style temple, you know, with those little dippy roofs and a huge tree. And then the clouds, you know, they were like illuminated, of course, with the sunset. And they were pinkish and bluish, you know, beautiful tacky colors. But the kicker was, it has those little dips in there. You know, so I've seen, you know, depiction of Asian clouds, you know, Chinese woodcuts and also Chinese paintings. You know, and I thought this was a stylization. No, this was a real thing. I've never seen these clouds anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Nowhere, you know, but there I looked again and again, you know, wrinkled my eyes. This was not a hallucination. You know, you had those little dippy clouds. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and so uh, then, you know, I um, was invited on the other side, you know, and, you know, had a little tea, had a little bit to eat, and then I swam back. <laughs> no hangover, nothing, you know, um, I mean, absolutely no muscle pain, nothing. <laughs> you know, of course, you know, I, I loved water a lot, you know, I swam a lot, but, you know, I mean, uh, I don't swim like you know, two, three miles, you know, in one day, you know. <laughs> you know, very beautiful, you know, um, elevating thing. And, you know, I learned basically how it is, you know, when you are in higher vibration, you know, same world, but you just see things, you know, a little better. 
So first of all, do you have you know a um, good karma with some cow poop mushrooms? Yes or no? So you know another really old drug, you know not so you know, popular nowadays because it's super harsh. Is the flying agaric, Amanita muscarius. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're wondering what um, you know this uh, mushroom, you know this red mushrooms with the white dot has to do with uh, Christmas. And in San Nicolas, and well, here is the story. So you know, Christmas is on the kind of on the winter solstice, and you know, which is you know uh, astrologically or shamanically, you know, a very powerful time. And San Nicolas, you know, was a shaman that would deliver, you know, the fly agrara, you know, to the different households. Mm -hmm. And because they were many times snowed in, you know, and the only way into the house was the chimney. Now, that wasn't necessarily a chimney, as you know, but just a hole in the roof, you know, where the, <laughs> you know, where the hot air, you know, came out, you know, and everything else was snowed in. Mm -hmm. And then people could in and exit there. So, you know, he would deliver those mushrooms. You know, and so you would do like a vision questing with those. And, um, you know, also it's famous, you know, for the Vikings, you know, um, that they would then take this stuff, you know, and um, then go into the Berserker mood. You know, it's nowadays like somebody high on angel dust, you know, and doesn't feel any pain, you know, doesn't give a crap what happens to his body. <laughs> You know, it takes five cups to take him down, you know, things like that. Um, you know, so this was happening to them. And, um, of course, you know, they would do a lot of damage there. Um, but, you know, you also could take damage. You know, I remember in a past lifetime where I, you know, ran into a village as a berserker. And, you know, run into a booby trap. You know, poof, you know, had a big thing in my tummy. You know, so, um, <laughs> first of all, you know, do you have any, you know, good common with the fly garlic? Yes or no? Do you have any bad common with the fly garlic? Yes or no? And if yes, that would be probably with the Berserker thing. Or maybe you went off the deep end, <laughs> you know, too, it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, do you still have any, um, let's say, um, you know, contracts with the you know, flying uh, garlic that, um, you know, are outdated and should be cleared now? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. If yes, then please do so, dear High Self and Spirit Guides. Amen, amen, amen. Mescaline. You know, which was used for vision questing, you know, by the Native Americans in the Sonoran Desert. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I have some stories to tell about this. <laughs> so, you know, there um, was this um, kind of, you could say, hippie tribe in, in um, Tucson, and, you know, there you know, into the act of religious freedom, you know, declared themselves as a mescaline cult, you know, and, um, you know, started growing, you know, in a field, you know, their sacred sacrament, you know, which was, you know, this uh, peyote cactus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it went over the media, I think, you know, they left, you know, they cannot let them be. And so now this is the story. 
So, you know, and I know those people involved. Yeah, personally, you know, I witnessed this. I didn't witness the jumping, but this is what happened. So they were doing ceremony and they were all tripping on, you know, mescaline, you know, on peyote, mm -hmm. having ingested the cactus. Yeah. They're staying around you know, like a huge barn fire. You know, I guess anything from 12 maybe to 20 people. And then one of them, you know, jumps in the old, of course, you know, in um, Adam's costume, in Eva's costume, you know, and one of them, you know, jumps face down, you know, into the barn fire. You know? Nothing on, you know, face down into the bonfire. You know, everybody is, of course, shocked first. You know, and then, I mean, if you just pull somebody out, you know, I mean, trying to get their hands or whatever, um, you know, you might burn yourself. So it took him some time, you know, to get him out of there. And, of course, <laughs> you know, there was no more peyote <laughs> ceremony. You know, so they all got bumped out. And, you know, and... Uh, this, you know, I think they stopped doing this sacrament. <laughs> you know, they kind of felt, you know, very discouraged. Probably they were also afraid of legal repercussion. But, okay. So, then, you know, um, I found out, you know, who this guy was. And I, I got to know him very well. You know, very well. And I asked him, so, you know, what happened? You know, why did you jump face down into the fire? And he said, you know, spirit taught me, you know, to do, to surrender, you know, and I jumped, you know, I followed, you know, I followed, you know, radically. Right. Now, you know, and I asked him also, you went in there face down, you know, the fingers down, you know, the vena and everything, you know, into the, into the flame, yes. Well, you know, I could not find any scars anywhere. You know, I looked, you know, I looked, I mean, no scars, nothing, nothing. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I knew that, like, the guy, he had a super life force. <laughs> you know, he would eat, like, two portions, you know, and be, be kind of not skinny, you know, normal physique, you know, uh, but eat two portions. You know, he could digest all this, you know, huge amount of life force. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and probably the Native Americans also weren't happy, you know, to, you know, for white men, you know, to use their sacred ceremonies. They probably also, you know, felt offended. You know, probably there wasn't any blessing from these groups too. I mean, I don't blame them. You know, so, um, you know, these are, you know, dangerous things. Mm -hmm. In some way, you know, of course, spirit, you know, stop this in a cool way. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I experimented with the synthetic form of this, you know, um, which is, um, you know, without the puking and so on, you know, nice, clean chemistry only. And it was a fantastic teacher in the sense that it showed me, you know, how to be in a high vibration, you know, for a whole day. You know, how it is, you know, how you live, how people react to you, you know, how you uh, can run, how you can walk through a forest, you know, um, where you normally would come out dirty, you know, be completely clean. You know, you could see in the dark, you know, we had to shant over the machine but then we could see in the dark in a forest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it was uh, definitely, you know, a great teacher for me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, um, there are all kinds of uh, dangers. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm an experienced meditator and yogi, and, you know, also from past lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Many lifetimes I was a shaman. You know, so other people may not have gotten away with what I got away. All right, let's just get to it here. You know, so you have um, good karma, you know, around uh, mescaline, yes or no. And do you have bad karma? Yes or no. 
Mm -hmm. Do you have any contracts you know, with this entity? You know, it's definitely higher intelligence. Mm -hmm. That um, I'm not beneficial anymore, yes or no. And if your high self wants it to be cancelled, we like to have it cancelled. You know, please, no offense, dear Mescalito. Um, but then, you know, if your high self asks it's for the highest good, then be so. Um, uh, um. So let's talk about are you Haska now? And I have to say that many of my clients, you know, got woken up by this great mother goddess consciousness. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has helped so many people, you know, to face what they needed to see, you know, and it was in a way where you say, you know, yeah, this is not recreational. <laughs> you know, you don't necessarily want to see, you know, um, what they're being shown. You know, to you, it's your weak spot, it's your wounding, you know, and things that make you understand, you know, and you may even purge and feel all kinds of feelings that have been hidden, you know, but it always, you know, was for the better. Um, but then also, you know, a warning, you know, I have had several clients, you know, where the shamans, you know, in, let's say, uh, Latin America, are taken advantage, you know, of tourist women, you know, sexually, financially, and also magically, you know, courting them, you know, stealing their life force, etc. You know, so be very, very careful, you know, with this, and definitely, you know, consult your high self, you know, and other friends about their experiences before you, you know, um, you know get into any trouble. <laughs> So, in this Ayahuasca, you know, um, do you have bad karma? You know, this is goddess, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Do you have good karma with this goddess, yes or no? And do you have any contracts that your high self likes to cancel or modify, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And if the high self wanted to modify it, we give permission to this too, as long as it's for our highest good. Um, now, I have to say um, that, you know, my clients that have experienced our Yuhaska, you know, these are goddess, you know, we can call forward, you know, in our normal meditation, in our session, you know. Um, maybe, um, you know, she uh, is not as harsh, <laughs> you know, as on the trip as such, you know, not as extreme. Um, you know, but, um, you know, we can contact them in a way, you know, like you can contact Mother Mary, whatever, you know, so they all have their own little perspective. All right. Now let's go move on. Mm -hmm. So LSD, you know, and you may say, well, you know, this is a later invention. Well, you know, as ergot, you know, a fungus that grows on rye, you know, and other grains, you know, it has definitely, you know, uh, made some waves, you know. It caused a lot of witch and paranoia. Imagine, you know, whole village starts tripping, <laughs> you know. And they're, you know, already paranoid, you know, from all the other stories going around, you know, and then the Inquisition moved in, you know, and then just, you know, pretty much there was a lot of torture and mayhem going. And, you know, of course, you know, those poor people, you know, that started tripping, you know, many of them, you know, thought they're going crazy or they're possessed by the devils. So, you know, not a good thing. You know, I also, you know, knew of kids, you know, that got into the LSD stash of their parents, you know, and, well, you know, they went into quite some La La Land, you know, for a long time. And when I was living in spiritual community, you know, there were a couple of characters, you know, that had been living there for 10 years, you know, maybe 15 years, and they were completely useless. 
you know, they were they may sit like in the field and play the flute, you know. And that was all they were capable of. You know? I mean completely, you know, um LSD, you know, on you know, a high dose, you know, can burn out your chakras. It's like revving a motor too high, you know, and then the pistons, you know, start, you know, heating up and you know, you get a freeze over or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, your chakras, you know, getting cranked too high, you know, and then stay open or, you know, not functioning properly. You know, or other entities, you know, start residing in you, you know, and then, and most likely you're not grounding properly. So, um, you know, it's something to be very careful about. And, um, you know, so, of course, also, you know, in the peak, you know, at higher levels, you know, if you take, you know, a lot, you know, um, there is probably a paranoia, you know, it can happen. So, yeah, you may say, you know, it's um, well, paranoia, it's like controlling your own mind. Yeah, you know, that aspect is there. Um, oh, yeah, I got a cool story regarding this, you know. But also, you know, when dark entities see that you start suddenly tripping, you know, and they may just, you know, do some mind projection and attack you. And then get you kicking. And, yeah, I got a funny story about this. So, as a student, you know, I laid in quite some LSD, you know, that was at the Aze, you know, in Münster there, you know, beautiful little park there at the lake. And then there was a time, you know, when people started turning into caricatures. You know, so you see their archetype, you know, very clearly expressed. And I'm like, uh oh, you know, it's time to you know, go into the deeper woods now. You know, I'd rather not be around, um, you know, people. And so they get into the deeper wood park. And there's a whole group of people, you know, which monster faces, you know, their body distorted, you know, mouth distorted, you know, and I'm like, oh, here we go, horror trip, horror trip. And then I saw a wheelchair, <laughs> and I realized, you know, that this was, you know, a whole group of handicapped people on a field trip, you know, and so I saw the mix you know, you know, of the physical body and then the astral overlay, you know, of their disturbed minds. You know, so I saw an overlay, you know, in a character form. And, well, you know, and then everything was cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but there are, you know, other dangers, I have to say. So I spent like 15 minutes, you know, at the curve, you know, with my bicycle. Wondering if in Germany, you know, the cars drive on the right side and the left side, or the left side, you know, I forgot, I, you know, and I didn't trust it, and I thought, shall I risk it? And, you know, after 15 minutes about, you know, I decided, well, I just gonna go a little further <laughs> where the road is straight, mm -hmm. and then I cross there where I can see what is coming. Now, you know, I, you know, I had picked the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, I mean, I didn't go, but, you know, I thought, you know, the cars would be coming on the other side, so I might have been in trouble. Mm -hmm. So these kind of assumptions, how things work, you know, they don't work anymore. So, you know, it's not a good idea to take this where traffic is in human culture. So, you know, there are, um, you know, good aspects, you know, where you're in LSD, you know, you can see aspects of reality, you know, that you're not aware of. Like, you know, you might see thought forms floating by. <laughs> you know, you might see the life force in trees, you know, or the uh, facial expression of a cow, suddenly you understand them. Mm -hmm. And, um... <clears throat> So, you know, um, there might have been, you know, a positive karma. So you have positive karma with LSD and substances like this, yes or no. And how about negative karma um, regarding LSD, yes or no.
Are there any unnecessary or dark contacts between you and LSD? Yes or no? And if there are, we like to have those cleared now. Amen, amen, amen. All right, and now, um, you know, a very popular um, brand nowadays, you know, opium. <laughs> you know, of course, it's, um, you know, it has been streamlined now by our, you know, pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's talk a little bit about this, you know. So Alexander the Great, you know, he was like super successful. You know, he made it all the way to India, you know. And so, you know, um, some historians, they say it's because, um, you know, he had access to opium and was using, using opium, you know, for his troops. Now, opium has two functions, you know, it um, stops diarrhea, you know, and if you have like, you know, a huge army, you know, going through a country, you know, and having all the drink, having to drink whatever is available, you know, I mean, after some time, you know, um, you get the bad water, <laughs> you know, and you have diarrhea or you get the bad food, you know, and have diarrhea, and, you know, that's a very uncomfortable, you know, anybody that has been traveling even with modern anamities, you know, will understand this, you know, imagine you're completely packed, <laughs> you know, it's like a hundred thousand or fifty thousand people on the road, you know, especially when you're at the tail end. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, you get, could prevent that, you know, and then also, you know, when you have an army and you have battles, you know, you have the wounded. You know, and what do they do when it hurts so bad at night or at day? They cry, you know, they cry. You know, and that's very disheartening to the soldiers, you know, very demoralized, you know. You think, hey, my God, this could have been me, you know. I mean, why am I doing this, you know, risking my health, you know, and my well-being, you know, for some kind of cacamania. You know, so very disheartening. But if you have opium, no problem. You know, they don't feel the pain, they sleep. You know, and so, you know, his um, army, you know, was, you know, in relatively, you know, good mood, you know, in doing this. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, on the dark side, you know, what was this, you know, the British Empire, you know, uh, distributed, you know, opium, you know, um, in the opium wars, you know, with China, mm -hmm. ruined the Chinese, you know, and, um, you know, the whole culture, you know, and uh, you might have been involved in this, you know, as a victim or as a victimizer, you know, um, or probably also, you know, then there's drug dealing going on, you know, I mean, in heroin. And, you know, in the good old times, it was also, you know, as laudanum, you know, in, in other forms, you know, available through the pharmacy, you know, for those that could afford it, you know, so... Even a couple hundred years ago, you know, there was, you know, some pretty heavy addiction and, you know, and around the stronger components. And when I was in um, Benares, in Varanasi, you know, um, there at the hotel where I was, there were about four or five people, you know, they were opium addicts. You know, um, they, you know, had enough money. I mean, that stuff is very cheap there. You know, and they all, you know, came there, you know, to die there. You know, they said, well, you know, we probably live maybe two to four more years. But the beautiful things that we see, you know, those visions and emotions, you know, as a normal person, you most likely won't have them. You know, so they were burning their candle on both ends, you know, and they basically made a deal, you know. <laughs> And, you know, an opium you can have, I mean, definitely, you know, very beautiful on visions, you know, in great, great uh, detail. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, that's why, you know, in these um, opium cultures, you know, you have those beautiful ornaments, you know, in the architecture. You know, that comes from this sculptures, you know, from this um, opium culture, you know, these kind of visualizations. Um, yeah, so it's of course also, you know, very addictive. And, um, you know, especially in the form of heroin, you know, a lot of crimes have been committed, you know, yeah, I got, you know, um, one of my so-called friends, you know, stole my money, you know, for heroin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you burn a lot of bridges, you know, doing these kind of things, you know, commit crimes, you know, hurt people that love you, that trust you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's dealing it or consuming it, you know, first of all, you know, do you have good karma with opium, you know, and, and the stronger components like morphine and heroin, yes or no? Mm -hmm. You know, you may have been working in the medical field, you know, that would make sense, right? And uh, do you have any bad karma, you know, with opium, morphine, and heroin, yes or no? And if you have any, you know, contracts with this, that could be cleared now. We ask that this be cleared now. Um, uh, um, you know, especially in the engine programs and curses around these substances, you know, done in this past life. You know, and whatever we don't need more as a crutch we like to have is clear. Mm -hmm. Generally, we overpay those kinds of deals. Um, um, ooh, yeah. You know, we ask for heavenly vacuum cleaners. You, you please, you know, pull these dark energies off us and send them to where they can be transmuted the easiest way. Um, um, um. You know, in all these addictions, you know, um, we kind of, you know, created, you know, social trauma. You know, um, you know by, let's say, <laughs> hurting them, you know, drinking the money away, you know, getting killed in bar fights, you know, beating up your loved ones when you are drunk, you know, or squandering, you know, the money on heroin, you know, and you're stealing from them. Or abandoning them, you know, so whatever it is, you know, we like to have this as much of this trauma and guilt now cleared, you know, as can be done, you know, um, 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 and just agree to that. And then let's find out do you actually have, you know, guilt and trauma around these substances that we mentioned before from past lifetimes? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Is there also stuff coming on from your ancestors and their misbehavior? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's have this cleared also as much as possible now. Um, uh, um. Yeah. And so if you ever seen a junkie, you know, that really needs this fix, you know, uh, do anything. You know? So we ask that any deals, you know, that were made either in an intoxicated state, you know, like drunk or stoned out, you know, or while in withdrawal, or, you know, that are not for the highest, you know, we like to have those cleared, you know, where we got tricked, you know, where there was basically blackmail involved. Um, 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 Mm -hmm. And while this is going on, you know, um, there probably was a lot of entity attachment, whether it's human ghost or, you know, other critters and intelligences, you know, that attached, you know, to you and got into your body or attached to you, to aspects of your darkness. You know, let's say when you in an intoxicated state, let's say, you know, being drunk in a ditch, having a good time, you know, and and you black out or just, you know, you open and they get into you. Mm -hmm. You like to have all the entity attachment. 
inkludeert nu. Um, um, um. And of course, you know, taking some of those substances, you know, they're very harsh, you know, like ketamine messes up your kidneys, of course, alcohol and others, you know, they mess up your liver, you know, so, and then there is withdrawal, trauma. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we ask now that as much of withdrawal, trauma and any of the, the destructive side effects, you know, on the different bodies, you know, in mind and spirit, like chakras, nadis, you know, and all these, you know, pathways, you know, some of them, they got burned out. You know, we like to have these cleared now and repaired and, you know, updated, you know, and brought to an optimal, you know, conditions again. Amen. Um, um. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, when you needed your substance, you know, any addiction, you know, and or you need it really bad, you know, we go to crime, cheating, crime, you know, bad boy, steal, rob, you know, whatever has to be done, you know, and especially when we are intoxicated and possessed, you know, by other beings, well, you know, we ask that, you know, anybody we hurt there, you know, that are stuck due to this, you know, we send help and released into the heavens with their loved ones. We ask for forgiveness and we also like to have our aspects helped as much as possible. Um, um, um. Let's see what this is going on. You know, you have to do you have karma with this? Yes or no? Yeah, probably everybody has, right? And we like to have all these trauma cleared, you know, all the way to the highest soul aspect, you know, and also throughout our ancestral bodies. Um, um, and then you clear again all those entities that have attached to our trauma, to our wounds, you know, the curses, the implants, etc. Um, um, um. Mm -hmm. Also clear any karmic residue from this, run safety codes, justice codes, truth codes. You know, and start liberating, you know, my and, you know, our ancestors, you know, I mean, yours and your ancestors, soul fragments, you know, they're still stuck on the dark side. You know, we ask that they all be given help, we give permission to this. Um, um, mm -hmm. And while this is going on, we also ask that all the contracts, you know, with the dark side, you know, we just checked again, you know, then clear, you know, find out if there's anything illegal, you know, and then clear them. Also clear any binding devices in vows, contracts, tech and AI influence, artificial intelligence influences. And, you know, this can now be cleared, you know, without us having to per personally witness it. Um, um, um. And please return any soul fragments, integrate them, you know, bring them to optimal energy levels, update them, and then protect them. Amen. And, you know, if you're not wanting to sleep, you know, I will count to three, and then you will wake up. One, two, three. How is it going? Mm -hmm. Alright, you should be feeling lighter, mm -hmm, smiley, I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, your life is probably going to be shifting, you know, ever so slightly, you know, sometimes maybe a little stronger. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, if you had any cool experiences, please share them in the comments below. You know, if you need any more help, you know, you probably, you know, trace down some stuff where you have bad karma, you know, where it feels really yucky and you need some help, you know, let me know, you know, and I can assist you with the session. 
um, again, if you responded well to this one, you know, you probably didn't also respond well to my other guided meditations. You know, um, it's a certain class of people, you know, that are responding well, you know, so take advantage of that. And give me, you know, thumbs up, uh, you know, and you know, subscribe, you know, definitely ring the bell, you know, or check. Um, you know, I had clients that want to see my videos and then not get notified for some reason, you know, so there's something going on, you know, maybe uh, some kind of shadow, ben, 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 you know, um, so, you know, um, if you don't hear from me, you know, for my videos, you know, within two weeks, you know, just, you know, go and search for, you know, and I love you a long time. Stay.